I'm really happy to be here. Um, I, I heard that this is an actual research conference, so I get to present research, and I don't have to hide behind video and stories about people. I can actually show you some research. Um, and actually, I'm really excited to show you the results of a lot of work we've been doing around television and Twitter over the last several months and trying to understand the connection between Twitter and the effectiveness of television advertising. Uh, we at Twitter believe that television is a really powerful, uniquely powerful advertising medium. Uh, and we work very hard with our television network partners and the talent to kind of bring the full force of, uh, of what they do, of the content, uh, and, and to really uh, uh, to amplify that uh, uh, experience. Uh, when we do consumer research, we find that Twitter really kind of uh, increases uh, the enjoyment of television for a lot of people who use Twitter. We like to talk about it as the, the social soundtrack to television, kind of like when uh, sound came into movies and it enhanced people's ability to enjoy uh, the content. We find that when people tweet about television shows, follow tweets about television shows, um, they really get more out of that experience. And, and I think that's a big part of the, the dynamic behind the growth of Twitter and TV. Our uh, chief uh, media officer or chief media scientist, Deb Broy, uh, kind of postulates this equation that he stole from Newton, F equals MA. And what he says is that the force of media is actually uh, multiplied by uh, the social interaction around that media. And we've seen that uh, on the rating side. Nielsen has put out research about how uh, Twitter drives uh, network television ratings. And we certainly uh, uh, hear that when we talk to consumers about them discovering content on Twitter and then going and tuning in uh, to, to television. Uh, but I, I'm not going to talk today about um, the uh, rating side because there's a whole other aspect of this equation that's really important, which is when people are tweeting or they're following tweets while watching television, uh, is that good for television advertisers or not? And a lot of people have wondered and come to me and said, well, maybe uh, when people are, are tweeting about television, maybe it's distracting them. Maybe the whole second screen phenomenon is something that's actually detracting from the power of television. Um, and this is obviously a really important question given that uh, in this market, uh, Nielsen has uh, uh, the Twitter uh, rating, which agencies are increasingly using to determine the, the, the quality uh, of television shows relative to their uh, clients' objectives. So um, what we did to kind of unpack this question about uh, whether television and, and, and Twitter uh, work well together is really break it down into four different research questions. The first thing we wanted to understand was simply when people are using Twitter while watching TV, does it distract them from the television spots uh, or does it actually make them more engaged? The second thing we wanted to understand uh, on a more macro level is when uh, advertisers uh, use Twitter alongside their television advertising, what does that do to the return on investment of their television spend? Obviously, these are interrelated questions, but as you'll see, we went about them uh, answering in, in two different ways. Um, the third thing we wanted to understand is from a media planning point of view. Um, there are obviously shows that are more social uh, uh, compared to other shows. Uh, and we wanted to understand if these higher engagement shows from a Twitter perspective were delivering more value in driving sales for advertisers compared to shows that had lower amounts of engagement. And then finally, um, as, as you all know, there are tons of hashtags on uh, TV uh, today, TV commercials. I think we'll see the Super Bowl on Sunday, uh, the majority, the vast majority probably of spots having hashtags. This is a, a big deal for advertisers. Uh, we wanted to understand, is it paying off? Does it, are they doing it just to do it? Or is it actually uh, providing some degree of return in channeling the conversation towards their brand? So I'm going to share with you uh, the research and the results from these four uh, interrelated questions. 
So I, 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 when I was introduced, um, you guys mentioned that I've worked at, at, at a couple of media agencies. And when I was working at Starcom MediaVest, my group was asked at one point to kind of estimate um, the number of television spots that were actually seen by uh, the, the, the audience that was supposedly being reached. And, um, and that was a really hard thing to calcu calculate. But what we kind of determined and inferred was that there are a lot of television spots that aren't seen. People are out of the room. They're in the bathroom. The TV is running all day in one particular room of the house. Um, and that's, that's kind of a problem for television advertising, despite the fact that it has enormous uh, power, even given that dynamic. So when we were asked by agencies about the, whether Twitter is uh, detracting from television advertising, uh, our initial hypothesis was if you can get people in the room uh, focused on the TV, uh, tweeting in the second screen or following t uh, tweets in the second screen experiment, uh, experience, um, then that has to be good because you're already dealing with kind of the cream of the crop. You have people that have an opportunity to see, uh, and they're actually uh, engaged in television. Um, but uh, nobody really took our word for it. So, uh, <laughs> so we designed a, a really big experiment. Um, and kind of just to, to summarize what we did is, is we asked people about the television shows that they watched the night before. Did you watch The Good, night, Good Wife last night at whatever hour The Good Wife runs? Um, we knew what advertising was running in those specific television spots. Uh, we asked them whether they were uh, tweeting about the shows, uh, whether they were following tweets about the shows. Um, and then we asked them uh, about, um, about the brands themselves, uh, advertising awareness questions, brand favorability questions, purchase intent. So what we're basically able to do is to isolate the impact of television on its own, and then television when people were following tweets and people were <laughs> tweeting uh, during that exper experience. So we're really trying to answer this question, does that second screen Twitter experience, does it distract, detract from the power of the advertising, or does it actually uh, engage people more? Looking at uh, asking people specifically about a show that they were watching, and then asking them if they recalled a particular television spot that we know ran in that particular show in that particular night, um, we found that when people were using Twitter, uh, ad recall for that television spot was actually enhanced. So what we're looking at here uh, is the first group. It's the ad recall uh, among people that were using TV without uh, Twitter. Uh, and then that second bar is people who are using TV uh, and, and using Twitter at the same time. And you can see that the ad recall is significantly higher uh, than TV only. Those next two bars, three and four, are breaking out whether people were following tweets or whether they were actually tweeting themselves, and you can see that the tweet behavior had an even more pronounced effect on TV recall. Um, we looked at the difference between people that were unexposed to any television advertising and people that were exposed to television advertising, and what the lift was in important measures like brand favorability and purchase intent. And when people were exposed to television only, Good news is television definitely worked in our experiment. Uh, there was a lift uh, in, uh, in brand favorability from the TV advertising alone. However, when people were engaged with Twitter during this experience, uh, for some reason, that television ad had an even more pronounced effect. As I mentioned, we believe that's because we're more likely to have people sitting in the living room engaged in that television experience, and we're sorting uh, it's kind of um, uh, filtering out people that really are not involved in that television experience at all. We found uh, the same uh, result or a similar result for purchase intent, kind of the granddaddy of attitudinal metrics. Uh, we found a, a, a pronounced uh, increase here, in this case a lift, uh, in purchase intent for TV only, uh, and then an even more pronounced lift among people that were using Twitter during that experience. So 
this first piece of research for us uh, at, at kind of the individual level, at the, at the person level, uh, kind of said, okay, well, when people are sitting in the living room, uh, it looks as if that when they're using Twitter, uh, that's a good thing for television advertising. We then wanted to understand, okay, we understand in the living room that seems to be this dynamic. What about in the macro uh, sense from, from uh, an advertiser uh, that's spending millions and millions of dollars on television? Uh, is this a good thing for advertisers when they start to include Twitter into their uh, media mix? What does it do to the ROI of their television investments when they include Twitter? So we made a really substantial effort uh, to answer this question. Uh, so uh, David earlier talked about uh, marketing mix modeling, and it really is kind of the, uh, the golden uh, standard or, or golden crutch of, of a lot of uh, marketers and advertisers. So with market share partners, we took all of the media data, uh, the media spend data for six telecom brands, top six telecom brands. We took all of the sales data uh, in that market, and we took the Twitter activity, and we basically created a category level mo model. We did that for two retail brands with Thinkvine in the US. Uh, they use an agent-based modeling approach, which is uh, kind of a next generation modeling approach. And in the US, we looked at 30 CPG brands. We looked at their media behavior, uh, their media spend, their sales, and their Twitter um, uh, their Twitter data for CPG in the US. So uh, we really felt that we were making uh, a number of really big efforts to, to answer this question. So in the UK, uh, just in context, uh, it's a very social market relative to Twitter, uh, and the telecom brands are very involved uh, in Twitter and Twitter advertising. And we found a really uh, powerful result that when we compared um, the, the advertising that was running uh, without Twitter to advertising that was running with Twitter across all of these six telecom brands going back two years, we found that the cost per acquisition for telecom was much lower. The ROI was 51% higher for television telecom when Twitter was run along with the TV. With Thinkfine, the agent-based modeling, uh, looking at two retail brands, uh, we found a similar result. Uh, what they told us is that for every additional dollar spent on television, that there would be a 17% increase in ROI if Twitter uh, were included uh, in that investment. So uh, the guidance was if you're going to advertise on television, uh, you get more bang for your buck if you include Twitter uh, with that investment. And then finally, with Nielsen, 30 CPG brands, um, what they found is a range from 8 to 16% more return on investment for CPG when Twitter was in included. In this particular experiment, what they looked at is for 30 brands over two years, they looked at all the different weeks that television was running alone, and then all of the weeks where television was running with Twitter. And in this giant uh, model, uh, they were able to show that uh, Twitter was a real accelerant uh, and amplifier of the effectiveness of television. So that is um, certainly corroborates what we found in the living room. Um, in the living room, we found that people were paying more attention to the television ads. They were remembering the television ads more. Uh, those television ads were having more of an effect on the way that they thought and they felt about the brands. And then when we looked across these markets, we found that at the macro level that it was also driving ROI. Um, I mentioned um, Social Guide earlier in, in the US. Uh, Twitter is, is the standard for social uh, TV uh, measurement. We give our Twitter data to Nielsen to, to provide that metric. Uh, and increasingly, agencies are using that data to make program selection. Um, and it's kind of kind of um, you know important question if you're going to start to uh, plan television based on whether it's more social or less social, uh, it's important to know what that uh, what the result is or what the difference is. So we asked Nielsen to take 
this giant model that they did of 30 CPG brands and look just within the television ROI result. And to separate out the ROI of high social shows, so shows that had a lot of Twitter activity relative to the rest of the TV shows, and then those with low Twitter activity. And what we found is that higher Twitter social TV programs uh, drive uh, significantly more sales than lower social programs, lower Twitter social programs. So in other words, uh, if you have a choice uh, in choosing a, a show, a program that has a lot of Twitter activity and one that has not a lot of Twitter activity, what this data suggests, at least for CPG in the US, is that that higher social show is going to give you more incremental sales uh, when we uh, control for uh, uh, the GRPs and the reach of that show. So from a media planning perspective, it does seem that there's also this synergy, uh, which sort of makes sense, right? You have more of an opportunity to engage those people in the living room. You have a more of an opportunity to create a synergy with your television uh, if you indeed are uh, advertising in higher social shows. There's a lot of work to do in here. Um, this is kind of the first step um, in, in just understanding that. I think what it does is allows us to say, okay, there's, um, there seems to be a higher return. Now, what is that return worth, right? Uh, and, and that certainly there's a lot of other calculations that go into whether you should buy a show or not, uh, the reach, the demo, the cost, uh, and that, does, that doesn't take into account. We control for reach here, uh, but we're not, obviously there are other objectives when you're making a media plan. That's definitely the next step. And, and, and one, of the, one of the things that's really missing here is cost. Uh, and there's probably some outliers that drive, drive this. So that's definitely, um, this is sort of a first pass um, um, in, in terms of the research. Like, should we even care? Is there a there there? There does seem to be one there. Now figuring out within the, that um, what's worth it and what isn't from a, um, and, and what makes sense for a brand. We didn't. Um, so there was a lot of other second screen activity. Um, they, they, they likely were doing a lot of other things in addition to Twitter that we were either measuring or we weren't measuring, but indeed that, that is the case, yeah. Um, it, it, you know, the research, we, we did get a lot of people saying uh, people who tweet are, not, are distracted from our ads. Uh, so frankly, it was simply to sort to, to, to address that directly. Um, but there are other things that people do. In fact, the whole TV only aspect of things in many ways is becoming less of less of a real phenomenon uh, at all. Beth? It's not users, it's basically, given that it's a model, it's basically, it's, it's looking at the television spend and the degree to which it's explaining the net sales for those CPG brands. And then it's breaking out that television spend into different groups television spend in high, television spend in low, and understanding how much net sales that, that that's driving. So it's not a, it's not a user uh, based research, it's, it's a econometric research. If you were only, if, if everybody was using Twitter, uh, then we'd expect that number to be higher. Yes, there are publicly available numbers, about a quarter of the US population is on Twitter. Uh, a lot of people use it at any given time uh, relative to whether it's a, a, in a month or in a year or ever. Um, so it's not the majority of the audience by any stretch. So there's still going to be time to ask questions, uh, but I am going to get the, to the fourth piece of research. Uh, and this one, this one I, I think is a lot of fun because we got to watch television commercials. Um, we wanted to understand whether television commercials with hashtags were more likely to drive conversation and what that conversation was uh, relative to a television ad. So um, somebody on our team, uh, Ali Tursek, uh, watched 500 television ads in the uh, electronics category. She classified them uh, by having a hashtag and not having a hashtag. Um, then she looked at the comments within a three minute window around those individual airings, across all of the airings uh, of that particular ad, I think uh, within one year. Um, and she, she classified uh, 
whether those particular comments or a subset, uh, uh, a sample of those uh, particular comments, she classified whether they were positive and relevant to the brand or sort of kind of extraneous to the brand promise. Um, so we're just trying to look at the relationship between when an ad runs on Twitter and it has a hashtag, is there a spike in conversation about that advertisement? And then if there is a spike, is it a good spike or is it a, 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 an irrelevant spike. What we found is that, um, at least in this category, uh, that the advertisers who had invested the screen time in their ad with a hashtag um, were driving more conversation about that advertisement. So there's actually 42% more conversation within that three minute window about that ad uh, when advertisers included the hashtag in their commercial. What was, what's really cool and, um, is, is, we, is taking 700 randomly of those comments in a blind way, categorizing them in terms of relevant or irrelevant, positive and not positive, that in fact the comments that were made uh, uh, in, in reaction to the commercials with the hashtag actually tended to be more relevant and more positive, about 18% more likely to be relevant and positive. So an example here of a positive and relevant com uh, comment is something about the spot and something about the product and something positive about the product. We also see obviously tons of comments like that dude's ugly in that McDonald's commercial or you know I can't stand seeing this thing again uh, and that makes up for a lot of the conversation about ads on Twitter um, and uh, advertisers were uh, less likely to encounter that reaction um, if they had a hashtag in their spot. To sum up and then hopefully we'll have more questions, um, kind of this postulate that the force of media uh, is multiplied by the social dynamic around that media. Um, we, we took that hypothesis, we applied it to the advertising within one mass medium television, preeminent mass medium for marketers, and it seems as if the data so far indicate uh, that in fact, from a Twitter perspective, we do get an amplification of the power of television advertising when Twitter is part of the mix. Yes, sir. Let me separate that out into, into two things. One is how do we know that a tweet is about um, a, a commercial? Um, that's, or let, how do we know a tweet is about a television show and how do we know it's about a commercial? Um, that's really what, first of all, a Bluefin technology which Twitter bought and then now the social guide technology basically is in the business of doing, which is taking that Twitter uh, data stream, uh, taking data about the television shows and Twitter uh, data about the television advertising, parsing that relative to the talent, the storyline, the time of day, the market, the time zone that the person's tweeting in and bring all that together in determining at scale whether it's relevant or not. For this particular uh, study, um, we, we couldn't read all 64,000 to, to dis decide positive or negative, uh, relevant or not relevant. We did that manually. Uh, we did that separate from, so we basically took those, we took a random sample of those 700, we categorized them, then we brought them back in the database and we made that, uh, that comparison, that analysis. Um, so that's, that's how we did that. So some of it was manual that you saw, but a lot of it is done at scale. There were, in fact, the, um, the selection of brands was based on we had to get brands that had both hashtag and non-hashtag ads. If we had a brand that only had non-hashtag, then we didn't bring that into the data set. So it was, it was controlling roughly. Now, obviously, there's correlations between how much I care about my TV spot and whether I put a hashtag in it, maybe. Um, there's correlations in terms of time. There may be correlations with product launch, et cetera. But we did the best we could. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I, if any other questions come up, uh, you can see my Twitter handle. I'm also Jeffrey at Twitter.com. So I'd be glad to follow up with anybody afterwards. Thank you.